everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is the last of my Mother's Day um, projects for this year's series. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and um, I will share, or have been sharing, the last year's series at the end of each of these videos. And I'll also share that playlist on my blog along with the playlist of all of these projects as well. So that's 10 projects in total, so plenty to give you inspiration. But I thought I'd finish with this lovely um, basket. And I thought with Easter coming up as well, it would work really well for Easter as well as Mother's Day. So the one that I'm gonna be showing you is all gonna be yellow. Um, but basically this is from two pieces of 12 by 12 paper, or card, well, strong paper or card is what you'll need really. This is double-sided as well. This is using the Wonderlust um, from First Edition. Um, and then I've just kind of pulled out the dark navy there in the ribbon just to decorate it and it's really big and I thought this one would be lovely for the flowers. So you could buy a little pot, a pot of flowers um, or a, a, you know, a small bouquet in a vase and it would be lovely decorated. I can't really put it on its side because I don't want it to obviously um, all come out everywhere but that's just an example. That's quite small. Um, oh, I've just pulled it off the top there. Let me... Uh, I'll have to find that in a minute. You know, in those little fake flowers, I've pulled it off anyway. Right, so that is that one. So that's two pieces of 12 by 12. So it's a huge basket um, or gift bag. So it'd be great as well. You could put tissue paper over the top. This one is using two pieces of eight by eight. No, I think it was just under eight by eight because I had to divide it by three. But again, I'll share all the measurements for each sizes. But that one there, you can see, you know, against my hand there, the size of that one. And then this one is a dinky one, and this is using two pieces of six by six. So again, with my hand there, you kind of get an idea. And I just think they're adorable. I think they're so cute. And like I said, they work lovely for Mother's Day, but also for Easter, because you could put lots of little Easter and mini eggs in there and put some tissue paper over the top, and it just looks lovely. So let me just stack them all inside each other. Pop them to one side. And again, they work great for birthday. Um, you know, put a birthday theme on them, obviously they're Mother's Day or Easter at the moment, but in even Christmas would be great as well. So I've got my mobile there, get rid of that. Okay, so you'll need two pieces of 12 by 12. So I've got this lovely spring color, and this again is from that Wonderlust um, first edition paper pack, which I'll share all the links to. And then on the other side, it's got this pretty pattern as well. You do want a pattern that is kind of, um, you know, uh, it doesn't matter which way up it needs to be, because it's gonna be wrapped around. So this is one I've already done, to give you an idea. So it wraps right the way around, so it doesn't matter, you know, which way you look at it. So bear that in mind when you're choosing your print. It's just some simple score lines. So you're just gonna score a long 12 inch side at four and eight, and then pop it onto the next side, and again, score at four and eight. So you should now have three, six, nine big four by four squares. Okay, so that's all the scoring. You need to do that on both pieces of the 12 by 12 that you have. And then what you want to do is, if I just burnish it all first, because it'd be much, much easier for you to see the lines and what I'm doing. Now you can see all those squares that I've got here, okay? You've got your top three squares, the middle square with your ruler. You want to line it up along the top and you'll see it's four inches. You just wanna put a little notch or a little pencil mark at two inches just along that middle four by four square, just the top of it. Just mark at two inches. And again, on the very opposite one at the bottom here, so this middle square along the bottom, you again want to put a little notch or pencil mark at two inches. So the, it's the exact middle of the whole sheet of paper. So if you're doing it with your whole 12 inch ruler or 30 centimeters, then it will be six inches, okay? Then what you want to do is from, so this is, if I just fold it over like so. So this is this square from the bottom corner of it, you're gonna score up to that notch. I'm doing it lightly because I don't want to go all the way through onto the other side. And then again on that side, just score down to the corner of that square. So if I just open it up now, I can do that properly. So the bottom, I'm just scoring. Make sure you've got a soft surface, something that will allow you to put lots of pressure on it. And again, pop my stylus down. Make sure you get a really nice point. You want to make sure you do get the perfect join because this is going to form this really nice 
effect. You can't see it as much on that one, but if I show you on the back of this one, maybe yeah, even with that one there, on the, you can see there you get this really nice triangle, and that's, you know, if you're slightly off with that piece, then you would notice it. So that's that one, and then I'll just do the same with this one. Okay, so now what you want to do is flip it over and where you've got that score line, where you've just done that triangle, you just want to burnish it like so. And again, I'm just folding it over. Okay, so now that's what I've got there. I've just burnished that triangle. So again, do this side here, turn it over and fold it up. It's much, much easier to do it that way. And here you can check, you can see there, that's a perfect triangle, I've got a nice point, and again with that end there, okay? So you want to do that on both pieces, you should have two pieces okay, like so this. Okay, so you've got this piece here, now I just went ahead and put some glue on that, and then realised actually you've got to do a little bit of cutting first. So I'm going to do it on this side and not the side with the glue. But when you fold this piece over, it will, uh, the, the top piece here, actually I'm going to do it this end just because that glue's drying before I sit it. So when you fold this one right over, you can't fold this side over on top of it. And that's because the top of this goes over this score line here. So what we need to do is trim it off. So I'm going to do it first so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll explain it to you because it can be a little bit tricky. So the whole thing's going to come down like so. All right, because this is going to be, if I bring it up like that, that's one half and then these are going to come together and form that basket. So once you put that one down and then that one over the top, it goes over that other score line, which forms this triangle outside here. So we need to trim that piece off. So what I'm doing, it's a bit hard to kind of show you, but pinching those two bits together, okay? So again, fold it over and just pinch those two bits between my finger and my thumb. That's what you want to cut. And I'm just going to cut down, see what I've cut off there, so I've created that shape. So like a diamond, um, kind of side of a diamond, and it forms, yeah, it's, it's really hard to kind of explain, but it's the easiest way to do it to them, because basically now this piece here is going to then fold down and over, like so. So that piece we've just cut away, this next piece goes on top, and then that's what gives you that side of your basket and this triangle like pocket on the front. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go through that. So that's the two triangles that we've scored and we've just burnished. That one, fold over, and this one comes down, and then you want to cut. And let me just just going to put underneath here a piece of card so you can see that shape. So that's the angle I went down and cut. Okay bring this all up here so you can see that other school line of the triangle and where that lies it needs to lie to what's it my right hand side of that piece so that it can fold over and just close like so I'm going to repeat it and show you again on that side there I'm sorry if I've rambled on a bit there but I just want to make sure that I'm trying you know getting it across as well as I can so you just want to add some glue now onto this triangle here where we cut and then fold it in and stick it down. Use your bone tool and just make sure that glue's spread out like so. Then you're going to put some glue on here. You don't want to smother it in glue. Make sure you go to the edges but you just want to make sure there's enough to cover it and then fold that all down. And again just spread out all of that glue like so. Then with this other triangle piece here, probably doesn't help that this paper's patterned, so apologies. It's sometimes when you make all these things, and I really want to use this print, but it doesn't always video well, so I'm not, I am trying. And that piece you're going to fold over with all that glue on it. And again, just using my bone tool, just to make sure I get that glue right into all the corners, like so. And then I want to put glue on this side. 
pillow and then fold that down. And again, just spread all that glue out. Okay, and now that will give you this lovely shape on the front. Okay, so now this side again, so this is back to where we were. So that piece and this piece, that piece goes in, this piece comes down on top. That's what you want to cut, is these two pieces together. But the problem is you've got to get your scissors right up to the, uh, the edges there where you've burnished. So that one, you're lying on top. And you can see there, and then cutting down like so. Doesn't really, as long as you cut enough so it's past that piece there that's bent, okay? So just use your judgment. Then again, I'm going to, so it's, it is really easy to do, it's just hard to explain. Um, and again, with this pattern paper, it's probably not the best, but never mind. So again, just stuck that one, and then I'm putting glue on this top one. Hold it down. And because this is now coming down over what I'm doing, I'm not gonna be able to see, which again, <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> okay, and then you've got this last one here. So you're going to put glue on this inside here, just again on that triangle. Okay, fold it over, and then on this piece here, this bit of the triangle, put some more glue. I found this all by pure accident. Again, I just sit around with. Um, my scoreboard and scrap copy paper and I just play around with score lines um, so that's how this one comes about and sometimes you have to just take little extras off to get it all to kind of sit where you want it so I think I've got there though hopefully you've all understood what I'm doing so now you have this really large basket now this would work lovely just on its own you could put some card now going right the way around to this side and you'd have a lovely little basket and you could fold down these pieces as well put a nice bow there there you go. So there is something just with the 12 by 12. I like to just go that little bit further. So now what we're going to be doing is popping this one inside the other. Now what I want is I need to cut these pieces out because I want to, when you put it just like that, you lose that lovely triangle effect. Even if you put that one, or you put that one on top, you, you don't get to see the triangle. So you just need to remove some of it. So I'm going to grab yeah, I'm going to use my bigger scissors, okay. and then what you want to do is from this corner here, you're just go and pop your scissors right up until that corner, you can kind of, you see I'm bending it a little bit there, and just cut nice and neat right the way up to that bit there where they all meet in the middle, like so. And again, do that on this side, so right down the corner there, and then all the way up, like so. You're only doing this on one, so choose whichever one. Now, that piece where you've not cut it will sit inside and it will all connect perfectly. And now you will have one, two, three triangles on the bottom and then this here, okay? Now what you want to do is glue all of this, all of the bottom and all of the back. Don't go over onto this triangle, just glue up to there, okay? Okay, so I've just smothered that in glue. I'm using the um, tacky glue, the Alina's tacky glue, which me and my mum both have the same, and it's brilliant because it dries super hard. So now you just want to carefully pop the big square on the bottom, so it lines perfectly up with the other square, then pop it on its side, and just kind of move it until you get that all nicely lined up there. And then pop it on the other side, and again, just make sure that all sits in there nicely, like so. There are a lot of like, I guess it's, it's quite an angled project, this one. There's lots of different edges and stuff to it. But sometimes we've got to do these things if we want to create these shapes and styles. So I do try and mix things up, as you know, and uh, bring you really unusual bits and pieces. Sometimes to get those, you've got to go out, go out of your comfort zone a little bit, so. Just making sure now, get your bone tool in there, get that all, get right up into all those kind of corners. So that's really stuck down. 
Okay, so there we have this really lovely shape and it's just gorgeous. Now again, there's other kind of um, variations with this. You could keep this like this now and just stick some glue to these pieces that are still um, loose. This one's not so loose, it's obviously got a bit there. Okay. So you could just stick those down and you could put a um, piece of ribbon or something to attach it there like so or just continue with some more card and do a handle or some ribbon and just have a really kind of um, what's not I don't know what shape this is actually one two three four five six sides is hexagon so it's not quite sick I don't know how it would be anyway I think of that but you know what I mean so you could keep it like that but I just liked having these kind of bent down so what I've done to get the, the fold is the corner this this side this if I bring it in here we go so this piece here you want to line up with this line here which you will see but you've got a line of um, where we stuck it together so if I just bring this down and show you so I'm just going to bring it across if I do it that way because it's better for me bring it right down and line up and then just pinch it like so so what I've done is folded it over there we go and you can see I've just brought it down so that straight edge lines up with this piece here okay now again, you could stick that down. I actually quite like them like that. It looks a bit like a collar. So again, with this one here, I'm just going to bring it right over. Kind of start with your middle and just, you know, get that all lined up with that. And then you know that the rest will all just fall into place. Pop it down on its side and then just burnish those score lines again. So you get a really nice crease. And there it brings a completely different look again. So again, if you wanted to stick them, keep the back, you can do, but again, I'm going to fold it down because that's the way I liked it. So I'm going to bring, again, starting from the middle, pull it right down so it meets that score line, that folded piece. Turn it over and burnish. And again, bring, oh, twirling it right around, pull that one right down like so. And again, like so, and there you have. How lovely is that? I really love it. <laughs> so got there in the end. Like I said, it's not hard, it's just a bit fiddly and it's hard for me to tell you what to do. But I'm really hoping that that all came across well. So now it's up to you how you want to decorate it. Because you've used the full two pieces of 12 by 12, I didn't want to cut into more 12 by 12. But if you've got some scraps, or if you've got some nice, if you're using like yellows and you've got some really nice craft card, you could do a paper handle. But I'm going to use some ribbon, so I'm just going to choose. Um, I want quite thick. I don't know whether to go for a bold yellow or whether. I, no, I'm not sure I like that one. I think it needs to be a bit more. That's nice. I think I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to make a bow here, and then I'm going to make um, some for the handle. So I'm just going to snip this off here, and let's have a look. So I don't want to do it too tall. I reckon. I'll just hold that there because I didn't I've done them all different so I'm gonna just show you what I'm doing for this one then you can decide so this measures at 19 inches the piece that I'm gonna make here for my handle so I'll do that in a second and then that leaves me with this piece here which is 17 inches which I'm gonna do my bow for the front so I'm gonna get that done first okay so I've done a little bow there and I've just got some foam double-sided squares and I'm gonna use a little one I find the foam works really well with ribbon when you want to stick a bow down. I've tried um, different kind of glues and eventually they end up falling off, whereas the ribbon has always stayed on. So I'm sticking with that. So I'm going to do, yes, yeah, that side is next, that's got the knot. I'll just stick it on the back there. Again, you can obviously decorate this however you want, but I thought the wow factor is kind of in the bag shape itself, so I didn't want to go too over the top with the decoration. So I'm just popping that one in the middle. I'm going to play around with that a little bit more. It's been a bit crooked. <laughs> I'll pull, I'll, what the hell is that? It's perfect. It is good, but it's gone a bit wonky. I'm going to have to play around with that again in a minute. Okay, anyway. Right. Now I want to do the this side So here. I'm going to grab my hole punch, pop it in the middle. 